This is a hoverboard, probably the most useless electric vehicle ever created. But don't worry, because in this video I will show you how to turn it into a one wheel, which is a kind of electric skateboard that balances on a single go-kart wheel to give a, a snowboard-like riding experience on and off-road. The build starts by completely disassembling the hoverboard. We need to take all of its guts out, since we'll need every electronic component to allow the new board to balance correctly. The two motors need to be disassembled to remove the rubber tire, and we can take this opportunity to slide the 3D printed rim adapter on the motor body before gluing it in place with some epoxy. The tire I choose is in fact a 10 by 6 by 5.5 inches go-kart tire, so the 5 inches rims need to be enlarged with this 5.5 inches 3D printed adapter. This adapter doesn't necessarily need to be glued in place, since the tire pressure will keep it in place. We can then cut the motor shaft to a more appropriate length using an angle grinder and making very sure to not cut or overheat the wire which is running through it. Since we have two motors and a single wheel, we need to bond the two motors together using a beefy 3D printed spacer to keep them at the right distance, with the axles in line and facing outwards. We can again use two parts high strength epoxy to bond the two together, but I didn't film this process since it was stressful enough to get the motor aligned off camera. In the end I was able to get the dual motor hub successfully together and it was now time to mount the tire to it. Before mounting the tire we can drill a hole through the sidewall and place a suitable inner tube inside the tire with the valve stem sticking out of this hole. We can now move on fabricating the frame. The frame is constructed of 8 and 10 mm MDF sheets with the rails made out of 20 by 40 mm rectangular steel tubes. The MDF sheets can be cut accordingly to the templates you can find the link below, making the two footpaths out of 8 mm MDF and the bottom plates out of 10 mm MDF. With all the wooden parts cut, we can start making the rails. For that I've also made some templates, which can be used to correctly locate all the holes and slots that need to be drilled in the steel profile, after cutting it to a length of 640mm. With the rails made, everything is ready to be assembled. To fix the motor shaft securely to the rails, I had a PCB way CNC machine two of these axle clamps that will be screwed inside the two rails and will hold the motor axle by clamping it with these two bolts like so. This block can be inserted in the rail and screwed in place with other four bolts. A huge thanks goes to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay is my go-to website for high quality on-demand manufacturing. They offer a wide range of services like PCB making, CNC machining, metal and plastic 3D printing and more. They offer very competitive prices and very fast turnaround times. Improve your projects with high quality custom parts from PCBWay at the link below. With both rails done, we can slide them on the motor shaft and tighten the two clamp screws accessible from the bottom slot. After threading the motor wires through the bottom of the frame, we can move on working on the front and the rear foot pads. First we need to screw some threaded inserts in the front and the rear bottom panels, so that we'll be able to screw some M6 bolts to hold it temporarily in place, allowing us to start working on wiring the electronics. Wiring up the controller was a bit tedious, and uh, I will link a video below that will explain in more details all the modifications uh, and the connections that need to be done in order to make the hoverboard controller work in this new configuration. 
The gyro board can be screwed directly to the lower front panel using some rubber spacer to make uh, for a height adjustable mounting system. This board needs to be located exactly below the rubber foot button that we previously mounted to the front foot pad, so that when it's pressed the optical sensor on the gyro boards gets triggered, activating the balancing function of the one wheel. With everything in the right position we can slide the 3D printed front bumper and screw the front foot pad permanently together with 6 M6 countersunk bolts. The same procedure can be done with the back battery box, in which the battery can be strapped in place with some tape, and mounted like so. You might have noticed that the battery was modified, in fact I took the original hoverboard battery and moved the four top cells to the side to create a slimmer battery that perfectly fits inside the board. You might have also noticed that I left an XT60 connector sticking out the right rail. That is uh, so that I can use uh, an external battery to power the board, making it easy to test with various voltages and different high quality batteries. Anyway, the board is uh, now finished, but uh, how does it ride? The board rides uh, very nicely, but it feels uh, hugely underpowered. The 700 watts of max power are nothing compared to the 6 or 5 kilowatts of some other boards available on the market. Still, it's very fun to zip around at speeds of up to 12 km per hour, and you definitely get a taste of the amazing experience that a more powerful board can guarantee. Still, you don't need to throw money at Future Motion to get uh, in this amazing hobby. There are plenty of DIY kits and uh, alternatives available, uh, offering high power at low prices, like for example the Float Wheel, the Fungineers Kit, and the Lenko Wheel V4 from Lenko Solution, which I will build in my next video. Obviously, subscribe if you don't want to miss uh, that, and uh, I'll catch you soon!